Hello, you beautiful marvels. How in the heck are you doing? Dana and I are back on... Dana, show them your sweatshirt, your sweater, pie your day. jumper. This has pie nothing day. to do with pie, but it's the only thing I own that has numbers on it. So I thought I'd wear it for pie day. Yeah. Well, I will say like in honor of pie day. So we're taping on pie day. You won't hear this on pie day. But on honor of pie day, then I need to either... Okay, both. I'll probably need to eat pizza because that's Ooh. a pie. That's a pie. Oh, yeah. And I'm going to have to find banana cream pie. <sighs> Yamola. Yep. Um, if, if you'd like to, you can leave your favorite pie in the comments. <laughs> yeah. Any, anything that has chocolate in it, I'm on board. Yeah. Ooh, Dana. <laughs> um, Hey Dana, what? We are hot. I, we're, well, <laughs> wait, we're that's not, whoa, we're hot. <laughs> we're, hot. <laughs> that's not we're ticked off, man. That's what we really yeah. mean by hot. Yeah. Yeah, um, yeah, got yeah, yeah. Uh, should I, in a t should in I just, a should I, I know, right? I'm just going to, here, let's start. Let me be, let's start with this one. How, how, Aww. let's start with this one for, I mean, for the, for the audience who's just, um, who were just in your ears, uh, I just put up, uh, by the way, let us know in the comments below what you think about our new backdrop. Yeah. I yeah. mean, Dana and I have entered a new space, uh, yeah. literally and figuratively. <laughs> Okay. Um, but on, on the screen, um, so, you know, Dana and I have actually been getting some really lovely and sweet feedback from our audience and our community. Thank you so much. And um, so one of our audience members um, just, you know, sent us this article um, or the title of this article, which reads, A Drug That Cures Autism? Neuro study, neuroscience Study Yields Promising Results. Um, I, you that's know. Why we're, that's why we're pissed off this morning. <laughs> yeah. And yeah. you know, it's, it, we understand that everyone, this is actually, this is a hot thing, right? In, in regards to everyone has a very strong opinion actually about this. And, 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 and please, like we want to respect everybody. Um, I, I, I think for Dana and I, and I'll speak for myself, the, the, there's this, um, when we have this cure mentality, especially mm -hmm. when neurotypical people have the cure mentality, um, or there's someone in a position of power and control, um, that has a cure mentality, um, it can be quite harmful. <laughs> yeah. It, you know, that there's so many layers to this and my head's just sort of swimming. Um, for those of you that don't know, I teach, Physi psychophysiology. So articles like this, I can actually read and be fairly discriminating about uh, a lot of the science I can at least sort of understand. <laughs> um, I mean, the, the whole cure mentality goes all the way back to the evil empire of autism speaks, right? I mean, um, you can go back and look at archived um, pictures and things like that of those old, uh, they've taken a lot of that stuff off their website now, but really, you know, 20 years ago, the, the really started the cure movement and then the whole vaccine causes autism movement. <clears throat> and this whole idea of that we're just inundated with now in so many different ways, fake news or inaccurate reporting. I also teach statistics. So I, I talk to my students about being good consumers of research and I mm -hmm. use um, articles like this or news articles a lot to illustrate how you can skew a finding, right? So this one takes a study. Um, I look when they had a DOI on there and I looked up the original study and it's talking about things in mice and rats that have to do with uh, um, basically a balance with some huge neurochemicals that are used all throughout the nervous system um, that mostly are out of whack when you have a seizure and a drug that's been used for years for seizures and actually has also been used for people with bipolar disorder. Mm -hmm. um, showing showing that it can sort of mute the whole system in terms of like um, one part of autism that they think they've 
discovered something called the sodium potassium pump and that there's an excess of it. And even that hasn't been proven. It's such a, it's like saying, um, I can put out a, a forest fire with my garden hose. You can't, right? It's, it's sort of as looking through blinders at one little part of something. So for a, for a magazine like this, this is in SciTech Daily, to put an article like this, to me, it's actually fairly irresponsible. And they're obviously just trying to get readership and clicks, right? It just makes me crazy. Um, mm -hmm. When you go in and re you're reading the headline article or you're reading a summary article from another, you're not getting all those details. And if you don't know a lot about drug names and physiology like I do, you'd be like, oh, look at that. They're getting closer to a cure for autism. Um, and A, they're not. Uh, autism is a genetically carried, um, what we call a, a, a multiple allele carried thing. They've, they've identified about four different genes, it expresses in different ways, depending on how many of those you may actually get from your parents. Um, what it isn't is what we call a mutation, right? Where something happens where when you're in utero or your mom exposes you to something, or you get exposed to something early in life and those kinds of things, which actually current research is showing we really think that's what's contributing to ADHD, which is, I don't see that as a cure thing. I just see that as really exciting, getting at the nuts and bolts of what's really going on in there, because then we can tailor treatment in a way that works the best, right? Mm -hmm. But with autism, there has been no nothing that I've read in, in medical journals that says that this is a a, um, a genetic mutation or a birth defect of any kind. It's actually carried out, it's, it's carried genetically. Now you have to have a bunch of like, you have to turn a bunch of switches for it to manifest. And a lot of people carry those genes and it doesn't manifest. But to say that you can have one drug that has one mechanism of what goes on in the brain specifically having to do with seizures is potentially a cure for autism it's not correct, first of all, and B, then it really does jump on this bandwagon, this, this harmful bandwagon of a cure, because then that means we're defective, something's wrong with us. I understand a lot of people's lives are very hard and difficult because of autism, I get that. But to, to go in this way of, like you said, someone in a position of power, someone who has um, a, a magazine like this, or people that are, go online and are are touting cures, it's dangerous. Um, yeah. Not just for people that think, oh, I can take this supplement and I won't be autistic anymore. That's dangerous, but it's also perpetuating this myth of what autism is, and that's really harmful. I wanna take a second and go back in history a little bit, and this is something we teach our graduate students, and this wasn't that long ago, 50 years ago or so, it was everybody in psychology said African Americans are not as smart as white people. They score lower on IQ tests. There, there's the proof. They don't do as well in school and they score lower on IQ tests. And that was the accepted mindset for years. And we know now, no, that's not what's going on. A, uh, if you're if you're testing an entire community that doesn't have advantages and aren't exposed to education, that uh, non-black folks are, there's a skew of the data. And we also know that the particular test that tests what, how we define intellectual uh, uh, capacity uh, don't test, really test IQ. They test like school learning and specifically like, you know, mainstream white suburban school learning. So that's, that has been completely defunct. Everybody knows that. It was a horrible, thing that they used to marginalize folks, right? And you can see this all through history. Ooh, Hitler was somebody who did this, right? The whole idea of eugenics is this idea of a cure yeah. mentality and you can take a drug to fix this. We know that autism is multifaceted, even in the brain itself. There's things going on in all parts of the brain um, and what we call systemic parts of the brain. So like the dopaminergic system, means we're talking about dopamine, but there's various parts of the brain that are doing that. It's not like one central location in the brain. So like the orchestra of dopamine in your brain. We know there's all kinds of other stuff that goes on with that. So taking one particular medication that you, we use for seizure disorders is absurd, right? Um, well, or I'm going to take a vitamin and I'm going to be cured. It's really scary. Yeah. I mean, Dana, the other piece too, like um, as you – so. Um, so Dana and I are both trained psychologists and as part of, I mean, as part of my training, we were trained to read 
research articles, right? Yeah, how to look read at statistics. Them. Yep. Yep. Um, how to read them. Is it what does the design look like? What kind of confounding mm-hmm. variables are there? Because yeah. the reason why it's important to analyze the actual source, the mm-hmm. actual research article is so that you can then kind of figure out how do we interpret these right. results um, and how close is it, how informative can it be in treatment, yeah. in yeah. mindsets, in right. f- you know frameworks and interventions. And this, this study was done in mice yeah. with human-induced f- genetic phenotypes that have mm-hmm. been assigned, I'm air quotes, guys. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, that have been um, autistic, like autistic assigned, like, right? Like it's like these looks are like autistic that traits. Looks like it, yeah, autistic yeah, traits. Yeah, yeah. You know, and so um, this is something that, and 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 you know, listen. I mean, Dana and I are in the are literally in the business of supporting the neurodiverse community. I mean, mm-hmm. like that's what we do. Uh, Dana is also a. a, a you know, a, a teacher and a professor, like, mm-hmm. I mean, she's, you know, influencing the, this next generation of professionals, thank goodness. Um, and they're influencing but, me because they're a lot more enlightened than people. I yeah. To right, I know. With. I hear yeah. my, yeah, my, yeah. my adult clients, my young adult clients yeah. really, really um, keep like, they really, really keep me on my toes as well yeah, um, in a very awesome. good way, actually. Yeah. But, um, you know, I think this is like really interesting to me because what someone's going to do with this article is they're not going to go back to the original source. They're not going right. to go back and read this. They're not going to realize mm. this was in mice, which is generalizing from mice to human brains is a really mm. interesting thing as it is. Mm-hmm. Um, we know that we don't, that we don't necessarily do that with metabolism. Yeah. Um, even though mice are often used for those types of studies mm-hmm. as well, mm-hmm. we just have to really, really be cautious with this yeah. article and and a, and a headline like this is absolutely yeah yeah you you talk about um, when people talk to me and they say you're not you know you're not a real doctor and yeah <laughs> I got that I got that recently yeah, yeah 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 actually we are so we are uh, we're clinicians and I tell people this all the time when I'm when I'm training um, students this I'm training people to do psychological surgery right and it's the same as you know is this someone that i would want to treat a family member it's the same as you know geez this person sort of did okay in my class i'll pass them through is that what i would want my surgeon to have sailed through uh, through medical school but not really doing a good job we are actually the we are the experts in psychological research and in assessment and an application of that and like you said to be really good consumers of research I train my students and I do the same thing. Sure, I read the abstract of an article. I don't go to the discussion section because that's the author's take on their results. You go to the results section and you read it. And from what you know, what does it mean? So when you read what what the author thinks of what they found, that's their take on it. There can be 8 million different takes on it. The other idea of um, causation doesn't, sorry, correlation doesn't imply causation. And I had, I'm trying to find the website. I had a, a, one of my students tell me about this website when I was going over this in class last week about correlation versus causation. And this is awesome. You should check it out, you guys. It's called Spurious Correlations, right? It's a website you can go to and it, uh, it, it shows a bunch of ridiculous correlations and how you could um, take off with that as causation. And there was one ridiculous one that had to do with the amount of cheese someone eats if you if you plotted it on a graph the amount of cheese people in in wisconsin eat um directly correlated with some ridiculous variable that had nothing to do with eating cheese but the the pattern looked exactly the same and this is what news does it it lays those two things on top of each other and says oh these go together so don't eat cheese or eat more cheese and this is sort of the feel that this article has to me <laughs> is take one little piece of it and then boom right you're running with it and it's really deep. but I'm check dying. it out it's an awesome website I, okay i'm dying yeah. right now i'm so dying and <laughs> and you guys by the way um 
what does that mean? Like, let's just, let's just kind of define correlation and causation. Like Dana, yeah. just really quickly, like, let's, let's just define those and get, get that common, let's get on common ground with that understanding. Yeah. So our, our field does mostly correlational research. So like I yeah. can, um, I can do even do testing and say to people, I'm going to give you a bunch of caffeine and then I'm going to give you this attention test and see how you do. You could say, oh, that's sort of approaching what we call causative research, but not really because I don't know if they've had caffeine before they've come. Is this sort of test that I'm using actually testing attention, et cetera, et cetera. But more of the ridiculous ones would be like people that take a shower every day uh, live longer. Now, you could over an entire lifespan, you, you ask these people, have you showered every day? And they say, yeah, for the most part, I took a shower every day. Um, and I made it to 98. Look, it must be, that's a correlational finding. Doesn't mean that taking a shower every day causes you to make it to 98. Cause I can guarantee you there's billions of people that don't take a shower every day that make it that old or people yeah. that do and only live to like 12, right? So right. that's the that's danger in taking a correlational finding and making it uh, causative. Causative, causative yeah. research in our field is so rare. Causative is the COVID vaccine, right? There's a reason that took a while to come out. They start doing research in rats. Um, rats are bred to be as genetically the same as possible. They make sure the finding is in all the rats. So I, use, I tell my students um, something called a p-value or significance level. For us, it's around 20% could be something else. We're sort of okay yeah. with that. You, that would never be okay in a vaccine trial. We're talking like 0. 0.0000 could be something else, right? That's causative research. I give this vaccine to you and it causes your antibodies to do this thing and we're controlling for everything else. You can't control for that in correlational research. It just means I saw this thing and this other thing exists with it. You can't say they cause one another. Yeah, they might, they might be, I think, I think where the bias or the, 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 um, kind of inaccurate thinking comes in is that things, uh, people believe that things are causational when they happen close in time sometimes together too. Yeah. Like, yeah. Oh, I yeah. kind of did this and this happened. Right. And like when really that causative where we're like, we did this and this is what resulted. We usually right. see that in like medical research and man, and usually random clinical trials, randomized clinical trials yeah, yeah. are what really lead to a very short, like, you know, as much surety as possible anyway. Yeah. And you just yeah. don't see RCTs or random randomized clinical trials in psychological research. Cause can you imagine it's going, you can't. Hey, yeah. yeah. And, or like, Hey, you know what? We, um, we, uh, uh we have this new treatment for depression. Mm -hmm. And, um, and so we took, you know, the hundred people and, um, we split them up in a 50, 50 and we didn't give, the, we didn't give the people, uh, anything in one. Yeah. <laughs> like, the ones that are like, kind of suit, ones that are kind of suicidal. <laughs> we're going to give you a sugar pill. Right? Hope, hope you it's make like, it through. <laughs> what? Like, it's like, so anyway, so there's or, that piece. Or yeah. I thought what I thought you were going to say is you're pregnant. Can we have your baby? Because we want to raise it in a laboratory and do all this stuff to it and see what happens. You can't do that, right? Yeah. yeah um, do okay. That. So I'm, I'm just going to say I'm on the spir this um, spurious correlations site. This is the Tyler um, Vigen, I think. Sorry if I'm saying your name wrong. Are you ready yeah, for yeah. this? Okay, here we go. Yeah, these are good. Number of people who drowned by falling into a pool correlates with films Nicolas Cage appeared in. <laughs> And what they do is okay. they show you the graph of it and they overlap perfectly. So it's like, oh, oh my God, it's so good. Okay. Oh, are you yeah. ready for this? Yeah. This is your yeah, cheese yeah. consumption. Another one. This is the yeah. cheese consumption. Okay. Per capita cheese consumption correlates with number of people who died by becoming tangled in their bed sheets. That's what it was. <laughs> <laughs> and of course, I'm like, people die from being tangled in their, I just perseverated on how does this happen? I'm so glad that I strapped my bed sheets down. I mean, I went on a total tangent, but yeah, it, they have nothing to do with uh, each other. Okay, and then and then I'll do one last. One more, just for fun. Just, oh, okay, okay. This is another, should we do another cheese one? Sure. People like cheese. <laughs> okay, I mean, I love cheese. Okay, here we go. Per capita consumption of mozzarella cheese. Okay. 
correlates with civil engineering doctorates awarded. See, so if you want to be an engineer and get your PhD, yeah. eat a lot you of mozzarella cheese. Mozzarella cheese. So you can it's see the ridiculous. ridiculousness of that. So, so go back and think about that article we're talking about in that. Regard. Yeah, I'll put that, that back really up on the screen. In, it really puts that in perspective. I think the other thing too, you guys, is that, um, and and I, this goes back to IQ testing as well. Mm -hmm. You can manipulate statistical data yeah. to do what you want. Yeah. So in psychology, we not only look at a p-value, we also look at effect size. And effect size tends yeah. to be less sensitive to how many people. But all you need for significant um, data in a p-value anyway is numbers. Yeah. If you yeah. have a lot of numbers, you will have significance in your study. And that's why a lot of people look at an R, an R, the R, not mm -hmm. the P value, the R value instead. There, there's just like, you know, and if you guys are interested, like Dana and I can start breaking down research articles. Mm -hmm. I mean, mm -hmm. and maybe that is something we do. And Dana, you and I spoke about ABA and actually um, mm -hmm. I had a, I had an ABA -er on my channel to talk about ABA's response to trauma. Mm -hmm. She's very... She's very much um, very active in the ABA community and just went to a recent ABA conference. Mm -hmm. And they're really, really mm -hmm. trying to, to, to shift and move their frameworks. Oh, but she sent me this article on um, ascent, mm. ascent in behavioral therapy. For those of you, ascent is like, like I know what this is or? and I oh, yeah, ascent yeah. to the therapy itself. Yeah. I, I, yeah. I agree. I yeah. want this. And I think that's really interesting. So, so or Dana, there's another. It's the same as con it's the same as consent. Really. Yeah, except that you're yeah. usually not of 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 age. Yeah. Gotcha. So when a consenting, yeah. you know, when you when you provide legal consent, you are you know of majority, and assent yeah. is when you're a minor, mm -hmm. or yeah. you yeah. don't have your legal, um, you you don't hold your legal rights. So that could yeah. be in a conservatorship yeah. situation. Right. Ascent right. is huge, by the way. Yeah. I mean, yeah. what, you know, anyway, we can talk about that. But if you guys want Dana and I to start breaking down articles, you can send us an article mm -hmm. if you like. And mm -hmm. Dana and I can break it down from a from a research, like how good is this research study? Yeah. yeah. How much can we take from it, right? Yeah. There's another one, Dana. So we've got this. So we get this. Someone sends this to us, which is interesting. And then... Someone sends this to us. Oh, yeah. The oh, secret God. to overcome Asperger's. Um, I want to just start you know, throwing you, things when I listen to a part of this uh, yeah. thing. <laughs> um, you know, this is, and, and, and the, 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 the crazy thing about this is that um, this YouTube channel has millions of followers. This is a very influential, a highly influential um channel. Yeah. Uh, Tom Bill Yu is known as a, as a positive impact, motivational, I can take the bull by the horns. I can change my life kind of guy, mm -hmm. um, is his brand. And so we recently had Dave Asprey on who is really known as a, as a pretty, um, serious biohacker and has done lots of things. Um, yeah. Can you say, can you define standpoint. biohacker? Cause it was a new term to me and maybe not. Everybody oh knows yeah. It. Um, I, I, in order to improve my performance, I change, I use biological data mm. to inform changes. Okay. Um, so, uh, you know, a really simple biohack, which actually we're seeing more and more of today is that, uh, lumen where you can breathe into a little device and it measures your ketone level. And it kind of tells oh. you, are you fat burning or are you, you know, sugar carb burning? That's mm. a biohack, right? I, I oh, get okay. this biological information and then I change my diet. Um, how about your Apple watches or, or your, yeah, yeah, um, yeah. you know, you have now sleep data. And I know yeah. some people are like, it doesn't really measure sleep. But, you know, you might, some people have five years worth of sleep data. They can mm -hmm. see their patterns of sleep. That's, yeah. you know, now they're like, oh, this is what around. I can change. Yeah. 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 And so, you know, I, I think for me, um, what is dangerous about this interview is that they do talk about some very interesting interventions that many people benefit from something like mm -hmm. auditory integration training mm -hmm. where mm -hmm. I am, you know, helping my brain recalibrate 
to the auditory sensitivities in the world, right? Sure. Visual, mm -hmm. you know, vision integration training or vis vision right. therapy. Um, or EMDR, because that or is EMDR. trying to reprocess neural circuits. Yep. And, yeah, yep. yeah. And those, those, you guys, you know, those are, are interventions and treatments that many have benefited from and many haven't. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so, it's, a, it's a symptomological yeah. uh, treatment, right? Yeah. It doesn't work for everybody. Yeah. Yeah. So again, it's, it's the idea of a cure. It's a, this idea of overcome, right? Which mm -hmm. is also cure mentality. Yeah. Um, and again, Dana and I are not saying... Should you investigate, evaluate, experiment mm -hmm. with different supports and services that might sure. ease yeah. ease how difficult it can be to be in this world? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Should we I, think I'm about curious you? of yeah 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 I'm curious about I, yeah. this guy's credentials. What? Who is he? And what is he? Which one? The, Dave Asprey or Tom Bilyeu? Yeah. The guy that's Asperger. saying you can overcome Asperger's, which would be the the other guy, right? Yeah, um, I'll tell you what is I'm I have a feeling his um he's like a Dave Asprey is a diet, fitness, nutrition, oh, performance okay. guy. Uh he so also So he's he's saying you can overcome Asperger's and he's not qualified for to make those statements. He doesn't he hasn't studied psychological or neurological issues. How can he even say, do you, do you see what I'm saying? It's the first thing I go into is when someone says something, I say, what are their credentials to say that? Are they an expert on the topic? Yeah. You know, he's, um, he's a, he's a author of mm -hmm. four books about, um, diet and human performance. Mm -hmm. Um, so on some level, he probably does have quite a bit of knowledge of nutrition and the human body and physiology. Mm -hmm. um, and I think this is a really interesting space, right? Like we see mm -hmm. a lot of this where, where we see experts who um, haven't necessarily gotten a degree in that field. Yeah. So he's, I don't think he's a medical doctor. I'm actually looking it up right now. Okay. Um, but I mean, he's done know, a lot of research about it. Is that, I, yeah. you know what I'm saying? I think this is really interesting. You're, as you're looking that up, I'm, I'm sort of, as you, these points you're making, I'm, try, I'm thinking there's sort of the central thread to it that would be good for our listeners to know. And that is things that you do that can help any part of your symptoms or difficulty, right, are good. And what came to mind for me is like, I suffer from chronic pain, I have EDS. Um, one of the things that's made a huge difference for me around that uh, and I live in the Pacific Northwest. We have a don't have a lot of sunshine. I don't like going outside a lot. So you know, vitamin D. I uh, I had my vitamin D levels tested. They were so low. I take a vitamin D supplement every day. And then I started to research what's the scoop with vitamin D. One of the main things that you can impact chronic pain with is making sure your vitamin D levels and then actually magnesium are up. So I take vitamin D and magnesium every day. It's lowered my overall pain load every day. And so that makes my life better in terms of irritability, ability to pay attention, things that my being autistic would interact with and cause me to have a hard time. So that's a really good example of, okay, there's this, there's a couple of these apples on this tree that if I do these for, for my physiology, it helps me overall. So this is this idea of using various things that you can to help I'm not on, I don't use gluten anymore because I'm gluten intolerant for some other people. Quitting gluten doesn't help their autism symptoms or their uh, ADHD symptoms. Other people are like, oh my God, it was life changing. So it's really important for you to be able to, as a person, can you cherry pick some of this data rather than doing what he's doing, which is, oh, based on all this, I can cure Asperger's or I can cure autism. Do you see what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah um, no, absolutely. So, yeah. Yeah. He's, um, he is, um, he is a computer science major. Okay. And has his degree in computer, computer information systems. Okay. Uh, and an MBA. 
So he's, so the thing, yeah, um, he's not he's not qualified to be making these assertions, right? He's a computer science bi um, business guy who yeah. has spent a lot of time in the biological space with doctors yeah. and um the other thing that's so on, dangerous uh, uh, about yeah. this this sort of cure mentality is it really shames the person that it's targeting um if you're not doing this you know oh i saw this thing online where you can overcome asperger's and so you're not doing that something's wrong with you you're not trying hard enough and that can really be shaming and dangerous and you know um People that hook onto news like this and then have it be their point can really hurt people in their lives that are neurodivergent, right? Yeah. Is, yeah, it's harmful. It's sort of it the ADHD. Why don't harmful. you just try harder? It's really can really be harmful. Well, and you know, mm -hmm. uh, you know, and uh, you know, we we've spoken on the show about how Dana and I, our neurological profiles, you know, are different, right? Mm -hmm. And I, you know, I would say like I am mostly neurotypical. Right. Mm -hmm. Like that's how I, that's how I identify. Um, and yeah, there are some things that my brain does that I know are a little bit different, but they don't mm -hmm. get in the way of my functioning. Right. Mm -hmm. that, like mm -hmm. I can sit down and when I need to work, I work, mm -hmm. you know, I know mm -hmm. how difficult that can be for some of my clients and that's, yeah. that's their neurological wiring. Like, you know, I don't feel like mm -hmm. I even deserve to even call myself slightly <laughs> neurodivergent. Right. But, um, I think the danger here, and I see this in the neurotypical in this kind of neuromajority arena, mm -hmm. is mm -hmm. when there's a cure mentality, that just feeds ableism. Yeah. That feeds exactly. marginalization. That feeds mm -hmm. unhealthy, highly judgmental, and um, acts, microaggressions, hell, yeah. major aggressions, um, yeah. and... And then how, now it's like the the person, the, the you know, the people that we're now treating, supporting, intervening with parents and their kids. I mean, it's like the what happens is this thought, this this mental framework mm -hmm. that trickles down into all these cascading behaviors. Yeah, that result in the way in which someone thinks about themselves, yeah, talks exactly. to themselves. Yes, yeah, and it's dangerous. Yes. And this is people that are not having this experience themselves saying things about and for people to do. So it really is this violation of the not about us without us. It's these middle age, pardon me saying this, it's just to sort of prove a point, white, straight, middle aged men, millionaires, probably up both of them, who have all the boxes they can tick off to be part of the neuro majority is really dangerous because they have power and privilege and they're talking about a group that doesn't have power and privilege and they're saying here's what's wrong with you rather than the voice coming from within the community and saying this is what the lived experience is like and we have we have a multitude of examples through all of history that are violations of this right yeah it's really and scary. the other the I will say the other thing that 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 like ru like raised my hackles you know like ruffled my feathers <laughs> yeah is that we're still this is a current episode and it's Asperger's like I know. we don't we don't even <laughs> use this term anymore I like I don't right. know whatever I'm but like, they wouldn't know that because they're not experts yeah although you can still give the diagnosis uh, the ICD code for diagnosing but yeah it's not uh, yeah it's just crazy. Anyway, um, again, I just like want to reiterate, like Dana and I are not saying, you know, don't, don't search for experiment with try things that will help you. Yeah. But our message is you get to decide yeah. when that is and what you want and how you want it. And that I, I think the other piece is um, for me is you're not broken. Yeah. No, and read things skeptically. You know, I think it's yeah. important to do that. If something really is a, yeah. a groundbreaking finding, it's probably going to stick and you're going to see it in multiple places and multiple people talking about it, people from within the community and not within the community. Don't just run on one podcast or an article and yeah. say, oh, this is the scoop. Yeah. 
for us as well. Don't let's just listen yeah, to our podcast yeah, and be like, oh yeah, this is what it is. You know, I mean, right. you know, Dana mm-hmm. and I come to this, come to this podcast with our own individual experiences, journey, neurological profile. You know, we, we both come to this. It, we couldn't even begin to presume what is good for you, exactly. but yep. right. Um, but I think it's just, how about just the human, how about just kind of keeping and, 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 uh, uh, kind of, um, living by this idea of respecting others and that, you know, humans, <laughs> I just, I, I just go back to human dignity. I don't know. Like, yeah. anyway, that's what, that's what ruffled my feathers. And, you know, as I work with my clients, I'm like, this is offensive. This is offensive to many of my clients when they see things like this. It's yeah. like, it's offensive to them. And that might, this not might not be offensive to you if you're listening and that's okay. That's yeah. okay. Yeah. Yeah. So anyway, let's just yeah. be, can we like respect each other and yeah. believe yeah. that other people are competent to know what they want to do and need to do in their life? That'd be nice. Let's just start there. Okay. Let's do it. Well, on that, well, on that happy <laughs> note. <laughs> oh, Marvel, Woo-hoo! thank you for being yeah. here. Um, we will, uh, see you in the next episode. Be good and be well and take care of yourselves. And go eat pie if it's your thing. Yeah. Dana, I almost forgot about that. I gotta, I really gotta work on what I'm going to eat later. Okay. I gotta, I'm going to have pizza tonight. You, you talked me into it. Pizza, right? I talked it. Wow. That didn't take much. All right. (laughs) Bye Marvels. We'll see you later. Bye.